So welcome back to Refrestos for yet another episode on the M113 conversion on the Capri. So, a couple episodes ago, we got that engine fired up on the floor. Fantastic. Last episode, we made the gearbox shift. Fantastic. Now, I want to put the gearbox back in to try that. I want to put the engine back in and I want to start getting the engine to run better. Problem is, I can't keep running on the ground because I'm going to do the head gasket. Because obviously we need a cooling system. Um, so this is why I've got this. Now, I can't imagine as many of you are going to guess what this radiator is off. Um, I felt a bit bad for all the people, you know, getting upset about me putting Mercedes, Land Rover, Mitsubishi parts and that on my Capri. So I thought I'd get them a Ford part, because I'm just nice at that. So this radiator here is from a Ford GT40, because, yeah, race car. So, now, some of you guys may have remembered in one of my previous videos, um, I'm not happy about this purchase because the seller, GPI Racing, uh, based in Czech Republic, uh, I think they're a Chinese seller though, screwed me. I ordered a 70 mil core, they sent me a 50. And I've still got a radiator, I've got to keep the radiator, and I've only managed to get 40% of my money back. So if this doesn't work, I'm out of pocket by 100 quid. So they can go screw themselves. I don't like them. Um, I can just only hope that this radiator is going to work because obviously it's not the biggest radiator. That's why I was kind of hoping for the extra core depth um, because it's going to fit tidily within the front of a Capri there. So that's the plan. With this radiator uh, has two ports to point out at the bottom. Be ideal if they're straight, but they're not because the GT40, this radiator is mounted like that in the front of it. We've got the temperature with fan switch bung. Um, and what we will need is because it's got no header tank or anything, we've got a header tank for it. And we do need a um, bleed line coming off this because obviously the air's gonna get trapped at the top of the radiator. So I'm gonna to try to be smart. I guess that that's an M6 normal thread. I'm gonna drill this thread through and hopefully fit a eight mil barb to it and make it as part of my, um, whatever you call it, you know, that, you know the, 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 the bleeder liney whatever. That thing, I'm gonna make it part of that. So, I think we need to crack on. So this radiator come with a set of um, I think they're 10 inch fans, or 9 inch fans, to go on it and that. All looks pretty smart, just a shame they screwed me. Um, and we're obviously gonna be sitting in front of the engine bay. So my plan is, obviously to ditch that brake line, like all the brake lines need to be doing. Ditch that, probably lose Part of this panel here so maybe cut this off back to here i think so i can clean this up get rid of all these excess bits of metal kicking around build a plate it comes off the bottom here and then a radiator will fit nicely in between it and i have someone to mount it to and then i make make a nice stain in the shroud that goes over here i think that is the current plan uh i'm probably gonna get choppy choppy on it i've got a whole selection of well for now we've got a cheap cheap header tank um I don't like it. I don't like the fact they painted it silver, which means obviously they've done a crap job making it and they've just covered it up with silver. But the idea is that's going to go hopefully in around here. But I might want to mock fit the engine first. And I need to mount this as high as possible to obviously stop any air locks. We've got all sorts of. I'll be well, reusing some of the Mercedes hoses because uh, it will save me about 100 quid. But I've got all sorts of silicon hoses, um, fittings, and bits and bobs to try and make it work. So that's going to be exciting. And the more I sort of tear apart this bay now, the more I realise that I can't put Mercedes back in it as is. So we're probably going to end up painting the bay as well, which is a huge job because this bay has every colour imaginable in it from previous paint jobs and owners and such. Filler everywhere and it's all just... See? And that's like a... I don't know that's the green or the grey and that's reacted underneath that and... It's not good, but we won't worry about that. For now, we want the engine in there running, so we need a cooling system to sustain that. So I'm gonna get choppy choppy a minute, clearance a bit of this engine bay, and we're gonna start fitting that radiator in.
Well, she's been chopped, all right. Front section gone. Uh, rest of the mounts taken off of here. Uh, found a bit of rust. Typical Ford. Nothing unusual there, is there? Um, so I'm going to have to fix that as well. Still got to take off. This was cut off years ago, roughly, the battery tray. So I've got to take it off properly yet. Now, I am liking my long stroke air chisel. I think it's cool. Um, yeah, so I'm making progress. Fair bit of work to do yet. But I think next thing now might be roughly mock up the radiator. And then maybe make this panel at the bottom that the radiator is going to sit on. So we can start fabbing up mounts. I guess so. Let's go for it. Well, I've been doing a bit of thinking. Now I know that's dangerous because that's how we got into a situation in the first place. A bit too much thinking. <laughs> but I like the radiator sitting up here because um, I can build like a stainless panel that goes over top. To kind of like like Ford had that original panel here, but it would just be one that stainless one that goes from side to side to tidy up that part. So being how I mount it. Do I mount it at the top, do I mount it at the bottom, do I mount it at the side? Well, I don't really want to mount it at the bottom. Um well I could do. I'd have to weld some brackets out of here, build it up here, and I want to put a stainless panel down here as well, once I've welded in the holes. So, I've been doing a bit of thinking, and I reckon, see, pull that out straight, if I build, have a bar, steel bar, it goes down the side here, through these mounted holes, bolts are welded down the bottom, and same at the top here as well, both sides, that means then it'll be bolted both sides, it'll be perfect, so I won't have to rely on the top or bottom for mounting, which means I can cut off these tabs. So before the compressor rudely interrupted me, as I was saying, yeah, I can build these steel bars to come up the side here, bolt on, um, that would sort them out and out. I can have a stainless plate down the bottom, great, a stainless plate at the top, and then I know it's not going to look too pretty this side here, so what I can do is then I can build another stainless cow. It goes sort of top, up the side here, folds over, and then pinches in these bolts with a bit of um, grommet strip around it, it's like a little ceiling panel, both sides, so they're removable. And I think that would be quite tidy, so I have a lot of stainless at the front here. I've got lots over there sitting there doing nothing, so perfect. Um, it would look tidy. Just dug from my steel selections here, and I've got some, what's that, 25 by 3 flat bar. So that would be plenty strong enough, and then even thick enough that I can drill and tap it, and actually just tap the bolt straight into it here. So I think that would be really simple and really easy, which is the whole aim of this build. So we're going with that. So I'm going to shut up and I'm going to do it. Oh, that worked rather well to be honest. So radiator S, I've still kept it at height. Um, might need to drop it down in the future, not sure yet. The three mil brackets here, have um, bolted on top and bottom, and then bolted on obviously to the radiator sides. This thing is absolutely solid. You could actually tow the car with that. Now the reason I kept it a bit higher for now is just because obviously I haven't got much space here for the coolant fittings where they come out. If it turns out I do have more space, then I might lower it down a smidge. Because um, obviously what I've had to do is mount the expansion tank as high as possible to allow an air gap above the radiator. Um, to which this thing is so horrific. Even bolts don't fit because they've welded and drilled the holes too close. <laughs> so, yeah, that's only temporary. I want a better one than that. But it should allow us to get up and running at least. So that's progress. That's, that's the radiator in. That's that one in. I reckon now we need to um, drop the engine back in and start sussing out all the plumbing. So this afternoon so far hasn't gone too well. Um, I worked out that I tried a different method of putting the engine in with the mounts this time. Not easy, much harder. 
so not trying that way again got the gearbox in but to get the gearbox in with a shifter now I had to cut out the tunnel a lot more um, didn't bother recording that just cracked on with it so there's now a shifter sticking out there a minute um, you guys can probably see so I had to do that in order to get the gearbox mounted in order to get the engine sitting in the right position to make up these hoses and obviously doing so now I've had to put the math on and work out oof, well, I have no idea so to the people that told me the engine should be mounted further back not possible I have mounted it back as far as I can to the point where I've had to cut out the heater bubble and all that so far and clearance wise there is nothing absolutely nothing I've already had to move the heater bubble cowl back in to get them after fit so the engine cannot go back any further not without not without removing the heater bubble modifying the bulkhead and extensive modification of the transmission tunnel but look how much room I got up front already still so engine is fine where it is it's not moving anyway um, so I've had to put the math in, get the cover on to then work out where the hoses can fit. We need to bend this oil dip to cut away, but that's not a problem at all. Well, it's actually um, a, a sucky out port, I think, at the moment. Um, or like a, a manual, because they don't come with a dipstick. And I've tried three times now to order a dipstick, and everyone keeps cancelling the order because they're not available. But we'll keep trying. So we need to move this tube out of the way so we can get to the heater matrix pipes. Um, I've got here some of the factory hoses which are going to be really useful um, they're not as pretty obviously I've got a 45mm U-bend I've got a 45 to 35 adapter I've got some 35 I think they are couplers I'm hoping they're 35 couplers uh, some 16mm couplers um, I should have a... oh that's interesting I should have a 16mm T as well and not a 16mm coupler I'm going to check my stuff in a minute I can't remember what they're for now but I did need a 16mm T oh that could be ah that there it is um, so we've got that we've also got a what should be an 8mm T yep and I've drilled out the inside of this 6mm threaded hole threaded in my barb and put a copper washer in there to seal it put the temperature sensor or fan switch in so the idea being something along the lines of have to reuse the factory hose at the top here which I'd rather not but again it makes sense for now because one it's the right size two it actually has an 8mm hose coming off it at the highest point which we need for our ventilation setup so that's going to go across to here that will tee into here so I'm probably going to keep this under a cowl so that will tee into this fitting and then from that T into the bleeder hole on the expansion tank so that should be perfect that then should mean we don't get any air locks so the air will you have to come out the engine and we'll better come out the radiator and go up so that's perfect um, so that's going to go down we need to make an adapter uh, to join so that's what that 35 to 45 silicon is to come out here and hopefully join into that it's the plan down here is a bit of a pig so we've got right at the bottom we've got the 30 uh, 45 out we need to somehow you bend really tightly up to here which i don't know how we're gonna do yet and then adapt and come across into the 35 ouch and then even more than that we've got this other one here which is like a 20 odd mil so again i kept the factory hose for that one so that 20 odd mil has to come out there and that then needs to join around for 16 mils go into the uh expansion tank and go around to the heater matrix so essentially the water will feed in from the expansion tank into the bottom hose or into the water pump there really so it feeds directly into the water pump goes through the engine comes out the hose up on the back here somewhere he's hiding at the minute but he's somewhere around here there's a hose it comes out I forgot where it is now that comes out back over here that's gonna have to go around into the heater matrix and then out of the heater matrix background to this one here so you have a little loop there until the thermostat opens and then it will allow water to flow through the radiator as well when needed um, I think the thermostat in this thing is standard is about 88 degrees hence why our radiator is um, 93 to 80 93 to 88 degrees on the temperature switch so it should basically hopefully the fan will cut out when the thermostat closes and we'll cut it 93 degrees so they should work together in tandem nicely that's the plan 
And then that expansion tank is by far the highest point, which is good, providing the bonnet still fits. Um, it is a good probably two, three inches above the radiator, which is perfect. So it might just work. I don't know, we're guessing here, but I enjoy guessing. So I'm going to start trying to rig these hoses up and see how badly it goes. Anything like the rest of this afternoon, it'd be a disaster. I want the same luck as this morning where we succeeded. Let's crack on. So this thing has been frustrating me a tiny bit. <laughs> my plans did not work. Um, my fancy U-bend and all that stuff, no, it was, wasn't going to work, which is annoying, because it's going to bring the hose up about here, and there was no practical way I could get it into the radiator. Plus, it turns out my, my brackets are too close to my hoses for my radiator, so I can't get the clips on. Today's been like almost a write-off. I've made progress, but it's been slow progress. But what we got here, so now I've had to completely reverse my plans and swap it the other way around. So, now the top hose comes out, I'll get a fancy P-clip and tie that back into there and shorten this hose. So it comes out, goes across, that'll tie back into there, goes down into the bottom of the radiator, fine. The air fair thingy hose, I forgot the name already again, comes out. Now, when it was the other way around, it come out nicely. Now it comes out like that, but there's not much I can do about that. Um, so, phew, yeah, it's going to come out under that panel, across, to the radiator, and then to the expansion tank. Fine. So the bottom one now, I've had to, I'm going to have to clearance the bottom here a bit more yet, but it comes out, it's going to go underneath, one well, between the AIB and the front, uh, like, support bar, and then it's going to, I'll probably shorten this hose, and it'll come out and join onto that up here. So I've ordered some flexi 35mm hose, I'm going to try to do it in one piece if I can to that joint. If not, it's going to be in two pieces. Either way, that's how it's going to be now. So the bottom one comes out, goes across, comes up. This one here is going to come up and around and over like that. Not the end of the world. Next issue. This brass T isn't really 16mm, or if it is, it's a loose 16mm. And then what doesn't help is this part of the hose, I've cut it, and it's then gone from 16mm to about 18mm. <laughs> Now, it fits the plastic ones fine, so I might try and order another plastic tee and use a plastic one instead. But that's going to go there, so that can be P-clipped up. That's going to be P-clipped there. Uh, these will be probably nicely P-clipped off of that shroud I make across here. And then this hose down here will be P-clipped off the underside of this one, so they will be tied in nicely. The engine won't have much movement, so that will be fine. The only time it will be a bit of a stretch is when the engine is tilted back for the gearbox work. Ah, so as you can see, I raided my hose selections out of our various brand new VW hoses on the shelf, and that's what that is, been cut down and altered to fit. Um, so next up now is to get a 16 mil around and into that first fit in here. Now looking at that, I might not need to put a bend on it. There might be enough clearance to to allow a natural bend. I've got some pretty good EDPM rubber hose, so we'll give that a go. I'll try to get that mocked up now, and then I'll um, let you know what the update is. But I've got me a coffee, <laughs> de-stress. I was gonna jack it in and just, just go in for the evening, but no, I'm gonna persevere and I will get this sussed out, because I don't want to mess around with it anymore like that. I want it, want, it, want it sussed out. I need to know what I need to order anyway, so. I best crack on, because the last two weekends, has been very successful. This afternoon has just been an absolute pig. <laughs> but I was kind of expecting that. It's been too easy. So, yeah. So, and also, I decided to spend a few minutes and just get the vacuum line mocked up for the brake servos because that's this massive line I've got coming in here. Um, so, I've reduced it down. Another one way valve there. And that then goes into, which I'm assuming, what was the brake vacuum hose before. Got to put the idle control valve off the old EGR port. Making progress. A lot of stuff on the engine still to blank. Um, might end up getting rid of these ones here, or they're under the cover, so they don't really matter too much. Um, 
yeah, and I need to start looking at getting rid of this warren room really because it's right in my way. So pull that out. I would say ditch the brake lines, but maybe not until I've got it moving. Because I wouldn't mind obviously giving it a quick test drive. And although they're a bit of a mess, they are still obviously functional. Got to get the fuel system sorted out in the corner as well. So, still a lot to do. Got to go order up the rest of these coolant bits now. Get that ready to go. So yeah, a bit behind schedule compared to what I wanted to be. But, shit happens, doesn't it? It is what it is. Can't do much about it. All I can do is keep cracking on and um, we'll get there eventually, won't we? So I think I will update you once I've just finished off the cooling system. Um, obviously I'm not hose clipping all together yet because the chances are, well, before I can run this thing, I need to have the downpipes made to put the lambda sensor in it. So the engine's gonna have to come back out yet before I can even think about, so engine gearbox will come back out before I can think about running it. Um, so I won't be hose clipping this or filling up the system yet until the engine's come back out and gone back in again. <laughs> uh, so before I'm, I might well end up obviously getting the clutch mocked up. We'll see the downpipes mocked up and probably the rest of the exhaust mocked up whilst it's still in place. Um, fuel system mocked up. And all that sussed out before then anyway. So, yeah, I'll see you guys once I've got them coolant pipes. We'll get them finished off down the bottom there. And then, what do we need to? Yeah, might as well. So as a week later, I've got some more parts. Um, got this 35mm wire hose. Now this stuff here was actually um, cheaper than normal stuff. I had, I think, a pricing error on eBay. Um, it's probably a bit tougher than I expected, but it is designed to bend with a nice tight radius without kinking. So despite being sort of plant spec, we might be able to make it work. Um, so now the idea is to try to get the hose on down from here. Down there, all the way down to that one at the bottom there. So, I'm going to try and get it in a minute. Um, I did buy some P-clips for it, but I wouldn't anticipate the hose to be that big. So I need even bigger P-clips. Cheers! And I'm going to try to get a P-clip across over here somewhere and tidy this up. So, I'm going to crack on and see how I can get this rooted in a minute. I've already cut out some of the bits down here, but we're probably going to have to maybe smooth it out and seam weld down the bottom there instead. So this is what I've ended up with here now. I've now got to alter the welding on this front panel um, to realign all these and join these panels again joys but that'll be done obviously when I take the hole out and redo it properly. I'm not happy with how it is. So because the angle the spout comes out of the water pump, um it's a straight a straight hose hits the sump. And also still hits the body. Now there's not much I can make do about the body I don't think. Um I'm gonna have to work it out maybe I can custom weld it up and make some more space there. But Worst case for now, I'll just have to protect the hose from both sides and only secure it on one point to allow enough flex for the engine. I thought about making a solid hose. The problem is then, we're still not going to have the flex. When the engine moves a bit, we're going to have very little flex. So we need it to be a silicone or rubber hose to allow for that movement. Hmm, that's also going to allow for rubbing. So, yeah, I might have to chop more of this out yet and weld in some kind of custom setup. That's how it's going to basically be for now. I'm um, going to get a hose clip, P-clip put on here to secure that one. And then, yeah, it'll do as a temporary, but overall, yeah. Yeah, we're going to need to make custom make some pipes and whatnot to really be happy with that. But if it gets up and running, then that'll do. So, although I'm not entirely happy with the cooling system yet, it will work, at least to get the car running and sort of test driven, and even touch on the road, but I do want to change that because I want it's going to be better than that in it really but it's gonna work so that's now success with that at least so we're making progress last episode obviously we've got the engine running on the floor which was great success did we or have I done one since I can't remember yes possibly next episode I'm currently in the middle of recording as well basically what we're doing is tying up things like the exhaust system hopefully the clutch and all these little bits of bobs um, so yeah, if you guys enjoy the content, then um, why not stick around? Look back on all the previous content. There's, there's plenty of content on this car prior to even being a Mercedes when I built the twin turbo Cosworth. Um, got the Turbo Tetris Range Rover, the L322s, the Mark II Golf 25 Tesla quick build, just all sorts really. Um, 
and another project which is going on which won't be on the channel for a little while yet so yeah um why not stick around subscribe for plenty more like drop me a comment tell me what you think and um hope i'll see you again next time i've been jordan cheers